My whole life, I had the curse of obedience. I never told anyone. I didn't even realize it wasn't normal. Until I noticed other people could freely defy people's wishes. But everything I was told to do, I did. I always had a clean room. I always stopped chatting in class. And I always was the person people would come to when they needed help cheering up. When I'm doing these actions, I'm not me. I don't know if someone else takes over. I don't know if my body simply exists to carry out actions without a consciousness. Maybe I remain in control, but forget it after. But somehow, every time I carried out a task that had been asked of me, I'd simply black out until it was done. I'd have no memory of fulfilling the task. Ask me to pick up something at the shop and I could not tell you how much it cost. But I'd retain the skills. Ask me to learn how to use certain software and I'd understand it like the back of my hand when it's done. When I got to college and moved in with a couple of other students, things got a bit more difficult. Teachers aren't as personal so nobody ever told me to get on with my work. My flatmates don't care how messy my room is, so they wouldn't tell me to clean there, just to clean the shared areas. I got lazy. I wasn't doing much because nobody told me to. I was finishing college when I realized a couple of extra things about this curse. Something that I thought I could use to turn it into a gift. The first is that it had to be to my face, in person. Ask me to do something over the phone or via text, and I could do as I please. The second, though, was more interesting to me. If I ask myself to do something whilst looking into a mirror... I could do these tasks on autopilot. A door had opened in life, and I walked through without hesitation, not realizing that it would lock behind me. I'd use this newfound loophole to do things that were boring. Make dinner. Wash your clothes complete this essay. Life was as easy as when I was a kid. I didn't need my parents or teachers to tell me the right things to do. I could tell myself. I was back to having a life where I do everything myself, whilst also having everything done for me. I experimented a little with cameras in my flat. I asked myself to clean the shared living area and watch the recording after. To my surprise, I didn't act all robotic. I seemed like myself. In fact, halfway through emptying the bin, one of my flatmates got back and spoke to me. We shared an inside joke, laughed, and spoke about our day. All the time, my voice had its normal inflections and normal tones. It was like I was watching my twin. I realized that I had been using this all wrong. There is so much potential I have with this. Could I stop wars? Could I bring world peace? Could I become everything I've ever desired. I started with something I had wanted for the past few years, but never had the courage or opportunity. You need to get into a relationship. Suddenly, I was laying next 
to the most beautiful person I had ever seen. We were cuddled up, in a bedroom I didn't recognize, and they were asleep. The bedroom must have been mine, or maybe ours, as items I owned back at the flat were in this room. I was happy. I was warm. I was cozy. But I wanted to take it a step further. There was a mirror next to the bed. I faced it and said, You need to start a family. The next thing I remember is holding my baby boy. I was in the hospital with my partner. I did a double take when I looked at her this time, as they didn't look the same. Maybe things hadn't worked out with my previous partner. I looked in the hospital mirror, took a deep breath, and said, You need to become rich. Sure enough, there I am, in my office, a plaque on my desk with my name on it, and CEO. I don't know what company I founded, but from the looks of things, I'm doing quite nicely for myself. I went into my office's private bathroom, and before I even caught a proper glimpse of myself, I said... I want to be the most famous and loved person on the planet. I was on stage, accepting an award for Outstanding Actor in a Drama Series, with applause thundering in the background. Ah, shit. No mirrors. I was going to have to bullshit my way through this speech. Thank you. The applause settles down. When I first founded my company, I never thought I'd one day get into acting. It's been so long that I hardly even remember how I got into it. Or maybe it hasn't been that long. Maybe it just felt like it. Um, I'd like to thank my son. Where is he? There was silence, an awkward, thick tension in the air. The host of the awards evening spoke up. I think we all join you in thinking that, even in death, raising Philip still led you to where you are today. And for that, I think somewhere... He knows you're thanking him. Oh my god. I thought to myself. I stood there, not knowing what to think. He was only in my arms a few moments ago. I spoke up. He was too young to be taken from us. The host patted me on the back. Twenty-three is far too young for anyone. My heart sank. My son died older than me. Wait, how old even am I? Is it selfish of me to care more about myself than the person I raised for twenty-three years? I mean, I didn't even really raise him. I had used this sick and twisted curse to do it for me. But, I mean, it wasn't my intention. I just wanted to have fame and money. How could I have known it'd take 23 years? The host spoke up again as I walked off stage. Almost six years gone yet still always in our hearts. Oh my God. It took 29 years. 
I've wasted my life. I'm the most famous, loved, richest person on the planet. And I don't have a goddamn clue who I am. At this point, was I even the main inhabitor of this body? By existing right now, am I robbing from whatever is in control of me when I'm blacked out? This is more their life than it is mine at this point. Besides, what about my family? I have a family now, apparently. Is it fair that I carry on not even knowing my wife's name? I can't exactly ask her now, can I? I don't know a thing about anybody in my life. It did catch up with me eventually. So, I went to the bathroom. Still holding my award, I look directly in the mirror and said five words. Live your best possible life. And then everything went black. <laughs>